slash training. And with that, let's shift over to OnSheep and talk a little bit about this challenge. So good luck to all of you as you are modeling up that hex key part. It's a fun part to model up. But for me, what I'm going to be modeling up is going to be this part here, 25 dash 01 dash 10 spool and this one does come directly from the two tall toby platform and so this is going to be a live demonstration not only of on shape but also of how to use that platform to access some of these challenges so here we go let's give this thing a try so i'll move this over here to my second screen and let's take a look here we're going to start out by going to tutaltoby.com we're going to sign up for a free account we're going to say click here to get started of course we can turn on our filters here and we could say only show me the free challenges so we've got about 20 challenges that are free for everyone and then if you really enjoy the app you can upgrade to premium and that will unlock 143 challenges you can, of course, sort these challenges by different types of skills that you're trying to challenge yourself on or sort the challenges by different levels of complexity. So you can say, hey, I'm not ready for tier five yet. Why don't you just only show me tier one, tier two and tier three? And I'll try and work my way through those challenges. So we're going to say that we want to filter this by free and we're going to go down and take a look at one of these free challenges that's available for anyone with a free two tall Toby account 25-01-10. And I'm going to click here to practice. And then if I take a look here at the analytics, I can see 141 people have successfully completed this challenge. I can see that down here at the bottom, uh, there's uh, maybe there's going to be a tutorial available for this challenge. And let's get into it here by saying click here to begin and go. What is the mass of this part in XXXX grams? And the tolerance on this part is plus or minus four grams. Now the clock is running, but I always like to kind of look through the model and think about a game plan before I get started. And one of the first things you're gonna to wanna to ask yourself is what is the, lo the best location for the origin? And I think in the case of this model, the origin would best be located right here. Now, the first thing that helps me determine that is does the model have symmetry? And in the case of this model, the model does indeed have symmetry. It's symmetric about this, this line. So that's usually a good location for the origin when there's symmetry. But then the second thing is I notice that there are a lot of dimensions that seem to be coming from that location. Like this max height here of 150 is coming from that location. And this 175, which is going across the symmetric is coming from that location. The diameter here of 110, well, that's the diameter of this circle here. That's coming from that location these other diameters here 155 75 they're also coming from that location so i think that's a good candidate in this front view and then using kind of similar logic there's a lot of dimensions here on this side view 70 50 25 200 that are all coming from this face right here as well from this vertical edge here as well so i think that's going to be the location of my origin now once you determine the location of your origin the next thing you need to ask yourself is what should my very first sketch look like and since this part looks like it's going to be kind of turned or revolved, I'm going to start out with my first sketch looking something like this. So come up, come over, come down, something like this, come, come straight close here. And then I'll just take that whole shape and I'll revolve it about this center line right here. Then I think that my next feature, I'm going to then have to, you know, tackle what's going on with this shape here. Well, I think for my next feature, what I'll do is I'll create a plane, which is offset here at 70 millimeters. So create a plane here at 70 millimeters. And then I'll create this geometry, geometry that's shown here and extrude that geometry out to a depth of 50 millimeters. And once I have that, I can go in and start adding this draft, draft of 10 degrees, draft of five degrees. And then the final thing that I'll have to add is just gonna be this hole here blasting through the model. So that's gonna be my game plan. And I know that I took maybe a couple of minutes to come up with that game plan, but I think it's always good to start out by coming up with a game plan and then getting into the modeling challenge. And uh, if you agree, be sure to hit the like button on this video, and hopefully that'll make our actual modeling process go a lot faster. So let's move this over to our second screen. Let's bring up Onshape here and let's get into this modeling challenge in Onshape. I'm gonna bring up my keyboard cam so that you can see any of the keyboard shortcuts that I'm using in Onshape. And I'm gonna choose create document and I'm gonna create this as a public document. And what that means is if you ever get stuck trying to solve this model, you could sign up for a free Onshape account and then search the public space for 25-01-10 space dash space spool. And then you could actually open up my model, my document um, from your free account because it's in the public space. 
So I'm going to create this as a public document so anybody who wants to can look at this later. And now the first thing I'm going to do is go up here to this hamburger menu because this model is in millimeters. I want to make sure that I'm not modeling in inches. So I'm going to say workspace units. Oops, I clicked the wrong item there. Workspace units. And then I'm going to make sure that I'm working in millimeters here. I'm going to make sure that I'm working in grams here. And now I am ready to begin my first sketch. So make sure you set your workspace units before you get started on these challenges. Now I'm ready to go front plane, S key, begin a sketch, N key to get normal to, S key to begin the line command, single click here, move my mouse up, single click again, let go of my mouse. The diameter is 110, but I'm drawing the radius. So I'm going to type in 110 slash 2, enter. I'm going to move my mouse over this way. I'm going to type in a distance here or single click. Then I'm going to let go of my mouse, type in a distance of 25, enter. I'm going to move my mouse down this way, move my mouse over, move my mouse up, move my mouse over this way. This distance is going to be 35. I'm going to move my mouse straight down here. And then I'm going to come back to this point here, single click, let go of my mouse, and I'm going to type in a distance there of 200. So what we're trying to do here is we're trying to use our auto dimensioning as best we can, but we might not be able to get every dimension in the sketch using auto dimensioning. That's okay. We can type in this dimension here. We can make this one uh, 75 slash two, enter. And then we can type in this dimension here, and this dimension is going to be 155 slash two, enter. And there we go. That should be what your first sketch looks like. Now, if I was making Making this for speed modeling, at this point, I would turn it into a revolve. If I was making this for manufacturing and, and for my team, what I would do is I would actually get rid of these half dimensions here, and I would press the S key, begin a line, and then I would press Q to turn that line into construction, and then I would press the S key and go back into dimension and create a dimension that goes from this line up here to this construction line, to the line itself, not to the endpoints, but to the line itself. And that way, whenever I move my mouse over that construction line, I get that double to dimension so that one's going to be 110 single click this line single click this line move over so move below that construction line that one's going to be 75 click this line here click the construction line move over that construction line that one's going to be 155 so just keep that in mind when you're using revolve and on shape you can get those nice diameter dimensions from your revolve it makes it a lot easier for your coworkers to understand what your design intent is so now I'm gonna come up here, click on this, looks kind of like a macaroni noodle. This is your revolve command. Click on the revolve command. I'm gonna say that the sketch is gonna be the full sketch here. And then I'm gonna click the revolve axis. And I'll just click this construction line again. And look at that preview, that looks pretty excellent. So I'm gonna hit the green check mark. And now remember our second feature is gonna be an offset plane. And I like to just right mouse button on the plane in the graphics area and choose offset plane. I think that's a real quick, easy way to get that offset initiated. So this is gonna go out to 70, enter and enter. And then I'm gonna single click on that plane, S key, begin a sketch, N key to get normal to, S key, I'm gonna sketch a line here that's gonna come up. This is going to come up to a height of 150. I'm going to create a line that comes over here like this, a line that comes down at an angle, a short line here. And uh, then I'm going to create, I think I'm just going to hit escape there. And I'm just going to begin another line here, uh, right back at the origin again. So a line here that starts at the origin comes over like so, create a line that comes up like so. Now what I'm going to do is without clicking anything, I'm going to come back and just put my mouse over that end point and then come off again. And that's the shortcut to initiate a tangent arc, another really handy command in on shape. And so I'm going to let go of my mouse here and type in 70 for the radius there, hit escape. Now this might be helpful to kind of rotate the view a little bit because we're going to take this vertical line here and this circle back here, the circular edge, and we're going to make them tangent. So we'll add the relationship of tangent here or press T on your keyboard. So there we go. Now that line is black. You're basically, when you're creating geometry like this, you're trying to get all the geometry to become black. And usually you do it kind of like step by step. So now we're gonna create, uh, we could maybe create a mirror at this point. So I could click on this line here and press Q, Q for construction. Then I can hit escape so nothing is selected or press the space bar so nothing is selected. Then I'm gonna put a window around everything here. And then I'm gonna choose this command, mirror, and boom, there is our mirror geometry. Now S key dimension, and this dimension is gonna go from here to here, the max width, which is, what is the max width there? 175, enter. And then the angle from this line to this line is 90 degrees, enter. And then the uh, distance from this top line down to this point is 
60 enter see how some of the more and more of the lines get black each time we add a relationship and then finally the distance from this line here down to this point is 45 enter and now look at that nice fully defined sketch i'll press n here to get normal too that is what your sketch should look like for this feature nice fully defined sketch that's what we're always hoping for so now we can do s key extrude and this is gonna tab 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 50 enter enter I really like that workflow of tab, 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 enter, enter. It's really a good quick way to finish those extrusions. So now we're going to apply draft, which is known as neutral plane draft. Now, I just did a video series on the OnShape channel on tips and tricks on how to utilize uh, tools that you would use for plastic injection mold design. And one of those tools is draft. And the thing is, when you're doing draft, you can either do neutral plane draft or parting line draft. Well, what neutral plane means is if I pick this face here, which is what I'm going to pick, this edge right here is going to remain neutral or it's going to remain stationary and then the rest of the face is going to kick out from that edge so neutral plane means the geometry where the plane is remains stationary and the other geometry of the face is what changes so i'm going to say this is my neutral plane and then this is going to be my face to draft here so you see how the the geometry which existed coplanar to the neutral plane remained stationary that's what neutral plane does and so then what i'm going to do is i'm going to choose to draft that out to a, an angle of 10 degrees enter and i'm going to press enter again and then i'll just do draft again here and neutral plane entities to draft this face here and draft angle five five degrees for that one and then finally, the final feature for this thing is pick this face, S key, begin a sketch, S key, circle, single click here right at the origin, single click again, let go of our mouse, 45, enter, S key, extrude. This is going to be a remove, the through all, and green check mark. So we just punch a hole right through that model, and that's a circular hole. So it's pretty easy to come up with the sketch geometry for that one. So this is looking pretty good. I can press P to hide my planes. I can come down here to the name of the part, right mouse button, and I can say edit appearance. And I can make this kind of look a little bit more like what the customer gave us. The customers always like it when you do this, when you make the parts look like what they gave you. So um, if you have time to do that, you know, the customer will, will appreciate that. Might get you some repeat business. And then finally, what I'll do is I'll right mouse button on this part here and I'll say assign material. And then we will go up here to our material library and we'll say TTT custom materials. And this is gonna have a material of 1060 aluminum alloy. And we hit the green check mark. And then down here in the corner, we've got our mass properties for this part. So we click mass properties, click this part, 5824 grams. So we'll do 5824 and enter. And let's go back to our presentation and see how we did. So let's see here. Oh, we can just do it right here. 5824, enter. Oh yeah, we did it. That's the cool thing about the Too Tall Toby app is that you're able to actually enter your answer directly in the app and see right away if you got it right. If it was wrong, the clock would keep running. But in this case, we did get it correct. And so we say submit and boom, we got a point on the practice models leaderboard. And uh, that's just, you know, we're going to start getting up a little bit higher on that practice models leaderboard. Now, you can see here that my time for this model was 11 minutes and 8 seconds, and the average time was 16 minutes and 16 seconds. So that's what I always personally go for. I always try to get my time to be lower than the average time. And if it's not, I'll consider going up and using that try again function so I can practice that model again. And by practicing and practicing and practicing, you're going to continue to develop the skills that will help you get better at 3D modeling and maybe help you get better at uh, 3D printing, 3D modeling for 3D printing. So let's head back into the presentation here. We'll catch up on a little bit of the chat. The correct answer is 5824. Yes, we did it. We got it right. And FPV Kev says, awesome live solve. Thank you so much.